First up, congrats on reaching 500 games. I haven't got there yet. <laughs> I'm getting there. I've had people been shaking my hand saying congratulations, but I haven't even got there yet. Take it easy. Congratulations on reaching 495 games. <laughs> That's a milestone yeah. in itself. It's quite a milestone, yeah. So tell us about how you came from a young kid at the snake pit to here in the palace, sitting on 499. Just tell Just us the about the journey. This is the Pleasure the palace. palace. <laughs> Uh, well, it seems to have gone extremely quick. I guess, um, I don't know. Well, you wouldn't think that 16 or 17 years would go extremely fast, but I guess the reason that I've made it this far is that, you know, after a while I figured out that, you know, playing professional sport for a living is a pretty good job. And you know, not that I ever really looked at it from that point of view that it is a job or anything like that, but the fact that, you know, I get to go to training every day and essentially do what I did since I was, you know, 11 or 12 years old when I first started out, go to a training session, you know, play a couple of games a week, stuff like that. I guess it's obviously changed. Is in the professional environment, you've got to apply yourself a little bit more, and you know, there's the weight side of it and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, that's kind of the way that I look at it. That I've had a wonderful opportunity to play basketball for a very long period of time and make it my living, and and hopefully do it for as long as I can. You're the tenth player to do it when you do it. The all-time list reads like a list of the greats. Uh, how's it feel to join those guys? Uh, yeah, uh, it's some pretty elite company. Paul Reese, I guess, included. <laughs> I just found out uh, all, some of the players on there today, but I um, <laughs> thought I'd have some fun with that one. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know, it just seems to have come along so quick. I mean, I played... The grand final doesn't seem that long ago, and in the grand final game three, I played my 200 game in that exact game. And to think that I've come, you know, almost 300 more games since then, um, you know, it seems to have gone by so quick. And um, you know, to think that you know, I'm in the last couple of years, possibly of my career, um, it's gone, yeah, extremely fast. And and to look at some of those players that have, you know, reached that that milestone and. Obviously, Tony Rollinson's one's not going to get reached. I'm not even going to be able to hold a candle to to that effort. But uh, you know, there's some pretty decent players in, on that list, and, and to, to actually have my name up there with them as well, and he's pretty good. Do you remember much or anything about your first game? Um, not really. Um, I th I'm pretty sure the first game was a game in, at the Snake Pit. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, I know that we did play. The Tigers pretty early down in Melbourne as well, and I invited my whole family down there. It was a, if that, if not my first game, that was my first road game, and I invited my cousins and everything like that, and they all came along. I didn't get to play, <laughs> and so him and his mates actually gave it to, absolutely gave it to me that I wouldn't get on court. And I could hear them yelling and screaming in the background, but I'm, I think the first game at the Snake Pit was my first game. I might have got a couple of minutes. Stole the ball off Leonard Copeland, who is in that list of the 500 players. I did actually get a steal off him, which I do remember. I remember Mark Brakey being one of the biggest players I've ever seen in my entire life, and obviously playing against Andrew Gaze. But uh, you know, it's a bit of a blur because I think I was out there for about a minute, and um, it's a lot. It's a little while ago, 1995. And uh, just any memorable moments from rookie season? Um. Oh, we made, it, we made it through the finals that year. I guess in typical fashion that, that Wollongong or Illawarra at the time, we probably never were ever picked to, to do any good or we were never ever picked. Uh, we always seemed to overachieve in, in how you know, we were perceived by the expectations of everyone. So I guess the fact that we made it to the finals in my first year, we played against you know, South East Melbourne Magic in the finals that year and lost in three games. Um, but I just think the fact, you know, my journey from becoming a player at the Australian Institute of Sport to becoming a pro professional athlete and it was just, I don't know, I was very starry-eyed and, and, you know, like living down in the North Gong <laughs> with old mate Wags down there, um, you know, driving around in the Kingswood, stuff like that. I remember all that kind of, those kinds of fun things and, and just, you know, playing in the NBL, which, you know, probably, I think it was... 1992 was like the first NBL game that I ever saw um, live and it was in Geelong. We were down there for a junior country Victorian um, camp and I saw Sydney Kings play against um, Geelong 
And yes, you know, that was yeah, 92, three years later, I was actually playing in the league. So um, to be able to watch that and realise that perhaps one day I could get that far was pretty good. Is it nice having this game down in Melbourne if you couldn't have it up here? Yeah, I think that's probably the next best thing. The fact that, you know, if I can't have it at home in Wollongong, which would have been pretty special, the fact that I can have it down. Uh, can you be quiet over there, please? He doesn't like Melbourne. Not at all. <laughs> no, he's a gone boy, that one. <laughs> it's funny, is it? Um, yeah, the fact that I, if I yeah, can't have it at home here in Wollongong, I guess that my second home, which used to be often maybe my first home, down near Bendigo, the fact that I can have a lot of school friends going to come to the game, my parents are going to be there, extended family that are in Melbourne as well, um, it's going to be pretty cool. Dwayne Wade? He might come, I sent him an invitation, um, since he chopped up my kneecaps a couple of years ago, um, I'm not sure he's going to be there. Some people thought it was <laughs> the nether regions that I got got hit, it was actually the kneecaps, yeah, it wasn't the family, it wasn't the family jewels. <laughs> 500 games, sorry, 499 games. How many of those games did you want to kill a ref? <laughs> uh, all right, so my first year, like I said before, that I was all just young and starry-eyed, and I think I said a thing, I think I might have played, I don't know, maybe 20 of those games. I might have had some DMPs in there, so where does that leave me? 479 games that I would like to kill a ref. <laughs> so, um... You're ranking on some of the all-time stats now. You're up, you're up there, and you know there's there's thousand turnovers, whatever. You know, <laughs> rebounds, you're actually uh, active <clears throat> players. You're on top of a few of them. The one that caught my eye was fouls. <laughs> Andrew Gaze is the all-time leader in fouls. He's got over two thousand. Somehow you're second <laughs> with seventeen hundred odd. Now. You've yet to play 500 game. How many of those fouls were actually fouls? Oh well, we're going to talk about how many times I wanted to kill referees. You could probably take. Let's just back and drop it down to a thousand. Yep. Let's take 700 off that. All right. I did actually. I did actually up until last season. I've only ever led the league in in some in a statistical category. I think that was three point shooting. Believe it or not. Um, and then the other one was fouls. I have led the league in fouls before, which is not bad. Now I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say that Tony Robinson's a dirty player. <laughs> he's, had, he's played the most games, but he doesn't show up on the top ten fouls of all time. Yeah. How does that work out? How is that possible? I don't know. He's just like. You know, the, the referees tend to let those big fellas sort of bang bodies a little bit down there, and and you know they don't don't really. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have quick hands, he doesn't chop at the ball too much and get some of those fouls that might look like fouls, they're not really fouls. I tend to hack away at the ball a fair bit. So the referees, and they're that quick that the refs can't see whether it's a foul or not. And being an active leader in so many stats, how do you kind of prevent from feeling like an old fella out there? How do you kind of maintain the, you know, the energetic kind of... It's called oil of you, lay. My crow's feet are gone. It's about maintaining the body as a temple, all that kind of girlish figure. I've got no idea what I'm talking about. It's the best dunk, best dunk you ever had. Best dunk? In the NBL, one of these games. Um, oh, I would have to say um, the one on Simon Dwight, stole the ball at half court. Um, if you see where the, the footwork is, you'll notice that I'd take off from the edge of the keyway and dunk on him. I think we have any access to footage for this so you can make There's plenty up. of footage you of that. You'll be able to find it somewhere. Do you want me to talk you through it? Yeah, well, yeah, you can make okay. stuff up. I can't do that. I can't physically do that anymore. So, if you can watch the video, perhaps. Comes this monster jam from Glenn Sample. Oh, oh, down Sample to Glenn! Oh, to Glenn! Oh, He'll Nice one on Mark Davis. Um, 
I don't know, maybe go through some tapes that... Uh, he was an old fellow then too, so you can't pick it on him like yeah. Well, I mean, no, I think he was still fairly athletic back then. I'm not well, he's trying to, he was trying to buck you, so... He definitely was trying to do that. Um, yeah, Matt has, got more excited than you did on that. Matt game. got excited, but if you do pay attention to it, Matt's mannerisms when I do get the dunk is... It was a very awkward, like, he wanted to really push me and think, Oh yeah! Woo! He kind of just... Oh, that. And Hawk Glenn Savile sails over Mark Davis. Best Probably see that on tape somewhere. Best block you had on someone. Best block? Oh, I don't know, there's just so many. <laughs> Actually, I did finish second to Simon Dwight in blocks in one season. So I was That's never going to be a chance there when he was in the league, was I? Best trash you've dealt out. Best trash I've ever dealt out. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I've <laughs> talked a fair bit. What about the Aaron Gabriel trash talk? Yeah, I didn't really want to bring that one up. I think I pointed out to him that he didn't belong in the league. That was a bit rough. I still think that's a bit rough. <laughs> it's probably the worst ever. <laughs> I was angry. I might have got a foul on me that I wasn't supposed to get, and I just sort of took it out on him. Before, um, apologies. Who's the best trash you've caught from an opponent? Um, I don't know. I think uh, Shane Hill might have given me a gobful at some stage. You know, I'm pretty good mates with him now, but I think he might have pointed out the fact that, you know, maybe I was a bit of wasted talent, and I need to step up and make the Australian team and, and stop playing like a bit of a pansy or. Not exactly to that nature, but that was that was the general idea of it. And uh, you know, he's he's been around a long. He had been around a long time. Played at many Olympic games, so I took uh, took that on board and played a couple of Olympic games. What's the toughest opponent you've faced off against in the NBL? You know, a few imports over the years. I think one of those guys, perhaps Steve Woodbury, was always pretty tough tough cover when he played. A pretty versatile player. Playing against him, obviously Leroy Loggins played against him a fair bit. Andrew Gaze is extremely obvious. <laughs> playing against him, and I think he might have had a 65-point game on myself and Matt Campbell one time. But I keep telling Matt, I think only 10 of that was scored on me. At some stage, the rest of it was him. <laughs> so there's some pretty tough covers there, and obviously, oh, you know, Sam McKinnon. I was always liking to Sam McKinnon with the way that I played and. And uh, he was a player that I played through juniors as well, but um, I thought he was a pretty decent player. What's the worst call a ref's made on a foul that you were found someone? Can you remember like one? That the was worst just... call ever. Oh, Photoshop the steam coming out of his ears. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened, but you got sent into one of the signs maybe two years ago or last year, and you got the oh yeah, yeah. back. And I think I remember you, while you were sliding, you were kind of asking the ref what's doing and what's got sliding that, yeah, back yeah, yeah. on. Ah, just, ah. just lastly, you mentioned a few uh, people and players. Is there any other people you wanted to give a shout out to before the game? No. No. It's all about me, isn't it? It's my 500. <laughs> what would I want to shout out yourself? Thank then. anyone else. Glenn Savage. No, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got to say something about Matty, like Matt. Campbell, we've been we played yeah, basketball <laughs> in uh, juniors in Bendigo and for whatever reason ended up playing on the same team together and quite possibly could be playing his 500th game pretty soon. So you know a lot of those memories that you know we had from juniors and obviously right through our professional careers has been pretty good and obviously a lot of influence of coaches. You know um, Brendan Joyce and and uh, Brian Gorgian and obviously now Gordy. You know it's been pretty good and. We've had a lot of influence and Gordy and I go back a long way through juniors and to the Institute of Sport and now into my professional career so it's pretty cool to be able to, to come this far through that and, and have him be there at the start of where it all began and have him actually telling me that you know if I actually did apply myself that I might actually achieve something some one day because he was one of those guys that you know saw a lot of potential in me but you know, probably something that I didn't necessarily see in myself at the time. I'd been around a long time, and played in the NBL for a long time, you know, been to Olympic Games, done all those things, and, uh, you know, it probably took me a fair while to realise what I could actually achieve myself. Sweet. Good luck on Sunday. Thanks. Hope we'll get there. <laughs>